So a few months ago, um, some of you may remember that I picked up this pedestal grinder from an auction, got it at a good price. Um, the only downside is it's uh, like most industrial equipment, it's um, three phase and uh, I'm running from a garage. So in the UK, that's just single phase, 230 volts. And I had looked at the possibility of replacing the motor. It's a 750 watt three phase motor, uh, dual pole, I think. So it's running at 2800 RPM, something like that. And um, I, as you can see, it stood in the middle of the garage. I'm running out of space and I need to get this up and running because it's, uh, it's a handy bit, bit of kit to have and it should be up and running. So I came up with a different solution. Now, I usually use the um, three phase converters, such as those. So that three phase converter is the one that um, drives the surface grinder. So those type, they're um, 2.2 kilowatt rated and totally over spec for something like this. It would be a waste a waste of money, even though they are relatively cheap, but it would be a waste of money to install one of those on a pedestal grinder. So I had a look around and I found one of these. It's a lot smaller. Obviously, it's made, uh, made in China. However, it's rated 750 watt, three phase. So I'm going to try installing one of those in this. Now my plan, the, the main controls or the, the, the start and stop buttons are obviously here and it leaves a lovely little hole at the front. So my plan is to mount that in there. Now, to start with, just to see if it actually works, I'm going to use the run and stop button on the front here. However, the connector block at the back here, the green one, allows you to wire in external buttons. So when I'm happy that it's actually working and it's not going to blow up or anything, what I will do is I will wire these buttons back in. So I can, uh, I can have that unit in here and the buttons next to it. Or I may even move the buttons up on top here so you can turn them on and off easy. Not yet decided, I'll, I'll see how it works out. But bear with me for a few minutes and uh, we'll get the wiring done. And um, hopefully this thing should be up and running. This is the, uh, the existing wiring as it currently stands. There's, there's a large plastic box on the, on the back and that's actually preventing it from going up against the wall. If you look at how far it protrudes. Without the lid, it's not too bad, but with the lid, it comes out another three inches or so. And I would like to get this up against the wall. Not too close, but so it, um, it doesn't take up too much room. Now, obviously you've got the three phase coming in here. It goes through a series of switches as a transformer to drop it down to um, 24 volts, which operates the light and some of the, the relays, the contacts. Um, as far as I'm aware, and, and I've noticed this with the, um, with the surface grinder, is if you use contacts through a VFD, it has a tendency to trip the VFD. Um, so what, what I tend to do with the with the surface grinder is spin the wheel manually by hand, then engage the contacts. And nine times out of 10, it, carry, it, it picks up and it, it, it goes. But um, I'm sure I read or I heard someone talking about contacts and VFDs not being the best of friends. So all of this is coming out and it should be replaced by that one unit there. So the motor will have a, a spool up and a spool down time. Um, you can configure that in the VFD, but um, hopefully it, uh, it should do the job. Now, I'm sure lots of people with more electrical experience than me on equipment like this will be screaming at the TV saying, what are you doing? But this is the best solution that I can come up with and it's not in a commercial environment. So if anyone has a good idea, please let me know. Okay, so there's the... Uh... There's that panel. I've taken the buttons off and mounted it to uh, mounted it in. The buttons are just there. I'll use them sometime in the future. And the 
back's now clear, all of the electrics are now off. So the next thing is to have a look at the motor. Okay, I know that this motor came from a high voltage environment. So looking at the information here, I can see that the high voltage environment requires links A1 to B1 to C1. So looking at the wiring here, you can see that A1 is linked to B1, which is linked to C1. However, I want to drive it in a low voltage environment, so I need to connect A1 to B2, B1 to C2, and C1 to A2. Okay, so <clears throat> forget everything I've just said. I was totally wrong. I, uh, I needed to double check the uh, configuration of these pins. So um, what I did is I, I used the meter, measured the resistance between, the, between them. So basically I'm checking the, for the continuity. So I know that the, that's A1, B1, and C1. It's, um, it's actually stamped just, just on the inside. You can't quite make it out, it's very faint. It's just stamped here. And I can see that the A1 is marked with a red uh, mark on there. And likewise, this cable coming up here, which is the secondary ones, that is A2. Now I confirm that with the meter. So I connected across the two, measured the resistance, and the continuity is between those two. So the, the only problem I had is I didn't know which way around these are, because you can't see the blue or the yellow labels on the other two cables. So what I did is the same thing. So I measured the continuity. So I know that's A, I know that's B. So I measured B and that's B2. So B1, B2. And C is this one, the middle one. So the new the layout should be like this. So we have A1, B1, C1, B2, C2, A2. And that means the links, which are these little brass pieces here, basically go in this configuration, which should align with what it's saying there. Okay, there we go, all wired up. So before I fit the motor back, I'm going to wire it up on the bench just to make sure everything um, everything's working. Now, I am bound to get the um, the, ro the direction of the rotation completely wrong. However, by changing two of the phases on the back of the VFD, on the back there, U, W, and uh, U, V, and W, by changing two of those over, you can change the direction of rotation. So I'm not massively concerned if I get it back to front. Okay, so here goes nothing. It's wired up. There we go. Let's see if I can blow myself up. So, let's add a bit of power. And on. Ooh, there we go. So I think this is the frequency. Yep, so you can change the frequency. It's currently set to a maximum of 50. And it takes you down to zero. Okay, that's interesting. And it's flashing forward. So let's try starting it. There we go. Not too bad. And we bring the speed down. And we should be able to change direction. Not bad at all. So, I mean, I'll only ever be using it in one direction on the uh, on the pedestal grinder, but it proves that the this little device works. That's good. Okay, so wired up. We have power. Motors in. I've just configured the unit, and uh, let's see how we get on. So let's start.
perfect. So I need to work, add the guards, get the light working, and um, I think we're good to go. By the way, if anyone knows the make and model of this pedestal grinder, please let me know. I, there's no markings on it anywhere, um, and I've got no idea who makes it. Thanks for watching.